This module is on Agile Teams. We will talk about the characteristics of Agile Teams, Agile Team roles, generalizing specialists, the team space and collaboration rooms, Agile tooling, co-located teams, and distributed Agile Teams best practices. What are the characteristics of Agile Teams? Agile teams, number one, are cross-functional. What does that mean? It means that the team is not made up of business analysts or a team of testers or a team of developers. Those are what we call functional roles. Agile teams are cross-functional. It means that I need all of the roles to get me to done. If I have a requirement on my backlog or a story that needs to get done, the question you should ask yourself is, who are the roles that you need to help you get that done? If you need a BA, if you need a tester, if you need a developer, if you need a DBA, if you need the business user to sit there with you, um, if you need an architect, these are all cross-functional roles. They help me get something done. So cross-functional. Agile teams are stable. Characteristic mean that uh, st stability means that the team is not going to be constantly shifting between priorities. Uh, a lot of people think that this also means that they have to be 100% dedicated. Well, that is the goal. The goal is if you do have 100% dedicated teams, you will get a lot more work done because of the focus. Now, in reality, what ends up happening is there's a core part of the team that is very much dedicated. I'm not going to say 100%, but hopefully 100%. Uh, maybe 80 to 90 percent dedicated on this specific project and there are specific resources that are shared or specific members that are shared which means because of their subject matter expertise they might be an architect they really are helping two or three teams uh, accomplish their goal but as much as possible you want stable teams that don't have resource shifting and multitasking uh, as one of the main characteristics Another characteristic is that they are co-located. Co-located means that we really try to get teams to sit with each other, next to each other. Why? Because we want to have a lot of face-to-face -face conversation. And we'll talk a lot more about co-location in this topic. Agile teams are empowered, empowered to make decisions, empowered to self-organize their work, empowered to decide what tasks, what, how they want to execute on the vision. As long as they're within the boundaries, uh, how do they uh, self-organize around the tasks to really accomplish their goal? So they are empowered and their input definitely matters. Agile teams are also highly motivated, which means that they are inspired, they have a vision, they have a purpose, and they are really trying to get something done. Uh, they're not the let me sit back here and ask my boss, what does he want me to do next? It's more of, let's get this done. We committed to this iteration. We really promised the product owner that we're going to get these stories done. So what can we do together to really accomplish that goal? Um, another characteristics of an Agile team is that they are mutually accountable. There's no finger pointing here. There's no, well, I didn't get uh, the requirements clearly, and that's why I didn't code it the right way. Or the developer didn't code this correctly, so that's why I found all these bugs. There's really, we are all in it together, and we're all in it to get the story done and deliver value for the customer. So that's what mutually accountable means. They are focused on value delivery, which means instead of focusing on getting tasks done, so I'm a developer and here's my list of tasks that I want to get done. I'm a tester and here's the big list of test scripts that I need to run. Or I'm a business analyst and here's the requirements. Instead of focusing that way, it's more around what is the valuable story, the business deliverable that we committed to getting done as a team and are we focusing on getting that done as opposed to our part of that or your part of it. So very much value delivery focused. They are open and honest with communication, which means in every iteration, which an iteration again is a time box, at the end of it and throughout the iteration, the team has a very open dialogue about what's working well, what needs to be improved, um, team dynamics, you know, how their relationships with each other are working. And it's important to be honest. It's important to let the product owner know, for example, I don't think we can commit to you adding one more story in this iteration. We've already had the planning meeting and we've already committed to as much as we can. Let's meet you in the next planning meeting to add additional scope or product owner based on the estimate that we gave you. Now that we are in the detail, this does not look like it's going to be as simple as we thought. So in all honesty, this is going to take a lot longer because of the requirements or because of the complexity of what we found. So open and honest communication. They are also quality driven, which means agile teams, and, and if you looked at the uh, topic on XP practices, really focus on test driven development, testing early and frequently, uh, completely eliminating bugs as you go, building quality in 
as we are actually developing. And so this whole idea of this final uh, testing, big testing uh, phase, where that's when we find all the bugs and issues is just not even, uh, not even a topic because you are actually fixing as you go. Agile teams are self-organizing. What does it mean to be self-organizing? And we'll talk about this even more. Self-organizing teams does not mean that they're managing themselves and leading themselves. They are not self-leading teams. They are self-organizing. They still have leadership, and the leadership is in the form of the product owner, letting them know what they need to work on and why. Uh, there is obviously a scrum master. A scrum master leads the process, needs to figure out how the process is working and make sure it's healthy. And there usually is someone, maybe one or two members, who are the technical leads or the solution leads. But the team within this framework figures out how they organize their work. Who does what? Uh, what are the tasks that need to get done? How should they design this? How should they execute? What's the best solution possible? That is what self-organizing means. Agile teams are also lean. Lean means that they really focus on cutting out waste. If there is red tape or processes that are not necessary, they challenge the status quo. They bring up that question and say, do we really need to fill out this 50-page document? What part of it are you really actually consuming? What part really makes sense to you that you really need from me? Because I would rather give you good enough documentation that is valuable and consumable than me spending two, three hours possibly on a change control request before I can move something to production that isn't really used. So, uh, you know, lean means cutting out anything that's wasteful, including waiting for answers from customers, uh, heavy documentation, heavy processes. They're really focusing on that. And the most important part of an Agile team is that they have fun. Agile teams are motivated, you know, positive spirit. They know that they're here to accomplish a goal. They're here to delight their customers and they know how to have fun during the whole process.